Hi everyone, welcome to this week's video. This week we're going to be having a look at one of my favourite flowers, the cornflower. It's the first flower that I started outgrowing as a flower farmer nine years ago and it's one that I've continued to grow every single year. So the idea today is that we're going to be looking at one individual flower and I'm going to start doing this um, over the course of the year. We're going to be just taking individual flowers that I grow and looking at them in more depth. So looking at them from the start today, from sowing the seeds right through to harvesting the flowers and using them in flower arranging. So corn flowers are super, super easy to grow. So it doesn't matter whether you are just starting out for the first time this year growing some flowers in your garden at home or whether you have been growing flowers for years in your season and flower farmer. Corn flowers are really, really easy and we're going to have a look in a minute at how to start them off from seed now that we've got to figure it's a good time to be starting off your seeds now over the next few weeks. And also they are super versatile as well. You can use them for so many different things. So you can use them in flower arranging, then you can use them for drying, pressing, and we're going to have a little look at that later on as well. I'm going to be answering the questions I think you might have about cornflowers as we go through, but if there's anything that I've missed that you would like the answer to, please just do go and pop a comment in the comments section of my YouTube channel and I'll get back to you with answers as soon as I can. So let's go just now. We're going to go to the greenhouse first off and we're going to look at seed sowing cornflowers and then we'll move on after that. We'll have a little look at um, harvesting them, conditioning them, using them in flower arranging, using them in wedding work, what else I use cornflowers for. So let's go. Let's go and have a look at cornflowers. So here you are. This is our cornflower seeds and they're quite distinctive as you can see from the little furry tail that they've got on the end there. It's like a little brush which makes them quite distinctive compared to other seeds. Size wise I put a five pence coin there next to them so that you can see the relative size of the seeds. And they're not as tiny as snapdragons but they're certainly not as big as sunflowers but individually they are easy to pick up and they're of a big enough size that you'll be able to spread them out on your seed tray. And that just means that you're not going to have too many growing in one patch and germinating in the same place and then it makes them more difficult to prick out and transplant later on and they'll start competing for water and nutrients and light if they're all growing on top of each other. So they're a nice good size to use for seed sowing. So seed sowing wise you don't need much to get you started if you're doing it indoors. There's lots of different ways of doing it. You could just sow directly into pots, yogurt cartons, anything like that you've got at home. The way that I prefer to do it is I get these half seed trays and I use the half seed trays so that I'm not sowing too many cornflower seeds all at once and having too many that I can't manage. And these half seed trays have drainage holes in the bottom which is important. And I use a seed cutting compost so it's fine in texture for the little seeds to germinate. And I also, once I filled that up to about three quarters full, I get a seed tray that's a full size with no drainage holes in it and I just fill that with a couple of inches of water in it and then I place my seed tray in it to soak up that lovely water from underneath. When it's all soaked through and you can see that it's damp on the top then I will just lift that out of the water and that's quite important. You don't want to leave it sitting in there because your soil will get waterlogged. You need it to drain away the excess and then we'll be able to start seed sowing after that. And I tend to just water from underneath in these seed trays because it doesn't disrupt the soil then. And also I will water like this when I need to, when my seeds have germinated, because then you're not disrupting all the little seedlings and things as well. I tend to only water from overhead once my little seedlings are much more robust and growing away fine. So that's the seed tray lifted out of the water and draining on another tray just now and the soil is nice and moist and damp for our seeds to now be sown on. So the seeds I have are blue ball seeds which is that traditional bright blue colour that you might associate with cornflowers but we've got lots of other lovely colours as well that you can get which you've seen in the video today so you're spoiled for choice really. So you can just lay out your cornflowers on the soil there, nice and spaced out so they'll germinate individually. I've got two there that are quite close together, so I'll just move them apart a bit. 
And then once you've got your seeds sown, and I'll work across the whole tray there so that I've got a nice full tray of cornflowers, you can then either just cover it with vermiculite, a slight covering, or you can just use a slight covering of your fine seed compost again. And you're just wanting to cover it, just cover it. You don't want to be burying those seeds because they do like a little bit of light germinate. They don't need to be just sitting on the surface with nothing on top of them, but they do need to just have a small covering. So just now I've got some seed compost here, so I'm just gonna put that over in a minute. So we've got lots of nice seeds in that seed tray now, so I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit of the seed compost over the top. So just a small layer there. Now, your cornflower seeds are pretty quick to germinate. They're one of my quickest. Never really have any problems with germination with these. And even within a week, I would start to see some germination. Certainly by two weeks, I would be expecting to see them through but maybe it might even take as long as up to 21 days. But definitely for me, I would say I'm starting to see them within the first week to 10 days popping up. And at this time of year, it's February just now, this is my first seed sowing of the year. So I would be putting this on the heated propagating bench um, just to give it a little bit of bottom heat to help start it off. If I was doing succession sowings of the seeds and it was getting to about April time and there was some warmth in the greenhouse, then I wouldn't need that bottom heat. They would just germinate fine on their own. But just, just now, I'm going to give them a little bit of a helping start. You could also put them on a sunny windowsill inside, anywhere that you think is just a little bit warm at this time of year, just to get them started. I shouldn't need to water over the top again there because my soil is really lovely and damp underneath and um, they're in contact with that. So I don't want to waterlog it. So I'm just going to leave that fine covering on just as it is just now. And then we'll check back once it's on the heated propagator mat. We'll have a look back in about a week's time and see if we've got any coming through. Don't forget to label them as well. So I've just put the variety of flower on there and the date. And it's really useful, not only for knowing what variety of flower is in that seed tree when you've got a lot on the go, but also the date as well, just gives you an idea how long it has been from sowing the seed to flowering when they eventually do so. And that's quite good for your records year on year. Um, so it takes normally about 10 to 12 weeks for corn flowers to flower from sowing the seeds. I would say more for me, it would be more like 12 rather than the 10, just because of the Scottish weather slows things down. So I definitely say it's worth labelling, even if you've been flower growing for lots of seasons. I know that we do tend to, after a few years, get to know what the seedlings look like when they germinate. But when you've got so many seed trays on the go in February, March time, it still is possible to muddle them up and to forget which is which. And just having that date, I think, is the most useful thing, just so that you do know how long it's taking your varieties to germinate and how long it takes them to flower as well. So I just wanted to show you another way just now that I do sow cornflowers into these half seed trays. So the ones that you've just seen, I've used one variety and filled the whole of that half seed tray. But here's another way I do it. So what I've got here is I've got three types of cornflowers and I didn't want to have a whole seed tray of one type. So I have put one down here at this side and I've labelled that, and then I've got another type here in the middle, which I've labelled, and then I've got a third type at the end of this half seed tray. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cover each of the sections with some vermiculite, and I'm gonna leave a little bit of the seed compost showing in between each row so that I can distinctly see which type is which. So I've got my vermiculite here, and I'm just gonna take a little bit, and I am going to sprinkle it over the top of my seeds. And these are seed trays that have already been soaked. So I filled them with seed compost and then I have popped them into a tray of water to soak up from the bottom. So that means that when I put this vermiculite on, then they are not gonna get washed away from watering above them where they could get all muddled up. I have covered over my corn flowers and I've done it in strips so I've only used the vermiculite on top of where the actual corn flower seeds are and that's left a strip of soil bare in between each of the rows of seeds and with the labels that just means that it's very clear which variety is in which part of the seed tree and they won't get muddled up. So checking back one week later and we've already got some really good germination that you can see here of the different varieties in their rows. 
here you are, you can see them a little bit closer up. So this is three different types of cornflowers, but because I've got them in their little rows, I can clearly see that the one on the left is classic magic, the middle is classic fantastic, and the one on the right is classic romantic. And because I put them all in the same seed tray, because I knew they would germinate at similar times, they have for me, so that's grand. I'll be able to pot them on at the same time and then start some new seeds in that tree. Remember with cornflowers to do some succession sowing so that you've got flowers through the whole season. So there are three times of the year that I will sow my cornflowers. There will be the ones I sow in the autumn, so late August um, and early September here in Scotland in Zone 8B. And I would expect those to be flowering by late May into June of the following year. And those will be much stockier, bigger plants with lots more flowers. I'll then sow again mid-February for flowers that will come out late June for July for me and then I will do more successions through to the end of April and those flowers should take me through August and September time. Once the cornflowers are germinated and growing away well in their seed trays it's time to pot them on and I either put them into 82 cell trays for another couple of weeks or directly into three inch pots. If I've got an awful lot of cornflowers I will put them in the 82 cell trays just for space saving. If I've got fewer on the go then I'll put them directly into the three inch pots. These are still very young plants. These leaves that you can see here are not the true seed leaves. These are just the leaves from germination and you can just see there the new true leaves starting to come away on the plant. If they are in the 82 cell trays like these ones here, then I'll give them a couple of weeks in there, water them when the soil feels dry and when the roots are starting to show out the bottom I'll then transplant them one more time into three inch pots. These are examples of cornflowers that I've grown away for a few weeks in the H2 cell trays and you can see the proper cornflower leaves on them now. And these are at the stage where the roots are coming out the bottom of the seed tray and they're ready to be potted on one last time into three inch pots before I harden them off and plant them out. So these cornflowers sown end of February, potted on through March, hardened off and planted out in April. I would be expecting to be flowering for me throughout June and July for about a six week period. So today is the 9th of February and this is what my overwintered cornflowers are looking like in the greenhouse. So these are the survivors that managed to get through that minus 15 overnight couple of weeks that we had back in December and then we had another big freeze a few weeks ago as well. So they are pretty tough, they've come through and they're looking pretty good. Now I'd say cornflower wise this year with the bad weather we've had, in the greenhouse I've probably lost about a quarter of my cornflowers and I've still got about three quarters of them. So they are definitely the survivors of all the hardy annuals this year. Those in the corn cockles, they are the ones that have come through the best. So we've got some more here. So what will happen to these is it's still early days in February but when we get into March I will start to harden them off outside gradually just giving them a little bit more time every day, a couple of hours to begin with, then taking them back in and then a few more hours outside the next day. Do that over a couple of weeks and then they should be ready to plant out in mid to late March. And then they should flower for me, these ones, by the end of May, possibly even a little bit earlier if we got a really nice warm spring. But just shows how robust they are. They do really well for me in the greenhouse every year over the winter. You're always gonna lose a few, but you'll get the bulk through. So this is a cornflower from last year that is just blowing about in the breeze a little bit there. It's just starting to be hardened off in March with some other ones on the table there. And I would just gradually do that, taking it in and out of the greenhouse for a few more hours each day. So for overwintering, you don't just have to keep them in the greenhouse. I tend to do a bit of both. So if you have a look here, you can see my cornflowers that have been outside over the winter. And you can see that they're fairly bushy and quite robust plants. They've got some good leaves on them. Sometimes you'll find that they look a bit tatty after the winter, but don't worry about that because the new growth gets going in the springtime and then they fairly shoot away for you and you'll find that you're going to have far taller plants, lots of lovely flowers on them early on in May from doing that autumn sowing and getting them overwintered. 
So if you're doing an autumn sowing, you can sow your seeds direct into the soil outside in August normally for me to give them a little bit of a chance, September if you're in a slightly milder climate. Um, I can still keep sowing in September if I think that the weather is going to be good into October. You just need a, a good few weeks to get them established and get their roots down before the winter weather sets in. You can fit quite a few cornflowers together in a bed. They don't spread too far. So from a spacing point of view, you want to be having your rows about 30 centimeters apart and you want your plants to be about 25 to 30 centimeters apart. They will spread as a grown plant to about 20 centimeters. So if you use 25 to 30 centimeters spacing, that just gives you enough room there. So what kind of soils should cornflowers be growing in and do you need to feed them? Well, cornflowers can actually grow in poorer soils. They'll actually do very well there. As long as your soil is well drained and not waterlogged, then they'll grow away fine for you. And you don't need to add any extra feed to the soil during the growing season. And actually, if you did feed them, you might end up with a lot of good leafy growth, but fewer flowers. What they do like is they like to be in a sunny position. So try and grow them where your flower bed does get some sun in the daytime but no feeding is necessary at all. One thing that cornflowers do need is they do need support. So they need to have horizontal support netting put in place, or if you're just growing a few in your garden, have some canes and twine just to support them. Um, I put stakes into my bed and I put the horizontal wire over the top. Sometimes I use some of the hoops as well just to help stretch the netting out as well. And you should be able to see in some of these clips the horizontal netting there. Much easier to put the horizontal netting on before the flowers get to this stage because they're very wiry stems, very difficult to go and stretch the netting on over the top of them once they've started to flower and really get growing. So I would say once you have planted them out into their final spacing, I would get the support netting on then. And it might just be hovering over the top and you might not have cornflowers growing through it, but at least when they get going, they can grow up through that netting and they will be supported well no matter what weather comes at them. And it does do a good job. You can even put two layers. If you're in a really windy environment, you can put a lower layer on and then have one sitting slightly higher up. Once the cornflowers are established and growing really well and are at the stage where they're really tall, I've quite often as well put some extra washing line around the stakes and then run it along the beds nice and tight. And that just helps with the wind if they're really tall and they're starting to flop and you've got the horizontal netting lower down. Just this extra piece of washing line can help to keep the cornflowers in place. So why grow cornflowers? Well, we've had a look at seed sowing today already and we know that they are really easy to sow from seed. They're large enough seeds to handle. They germinate really quickly with good germination rates. They're easy to pot on and look after and then plant out. And we also know from overwintering these flowers that here in Zone 8B in Scotland, they can cope with our harsher winters. This year was a really good example with our minus 15 overnight temperatures for periods of time. And the vast majority of the cornflowers came through. They survive both in the greenhouse and outside in the flower patch over winters here in Scotland. So why else should we grow cornflower as well? I think they look absolutely fantastic flowers and they can just fill your garden and your flower farms with colour right through from May up until the first frost if you successionally sow them in batches. And the flowers attract wildlife to your garden. You'll see that from the clips with all the bees on the flowers. And you also can grow so many different colours of cornflowers. You are not just limited to the blue variety that is most commonly known. And there's so many other colours which you can have a look at just now and see if you can get any inspiration for new ones to try this year in your flower patches. I would never be without blue ball cornflowers because I just think they are the most amazing little pops of colour in your garden. They're such a vivid, bright blue, so they are fantastic. You can also get a seed mix called Classic Fantastic and this is a beautiful mix of blue shades of cornflower. So they've all got slightly different shades to them and slightly different markings on them which make them really pretty. 
If you want to try a pink variety, try Pink Ball. It is a super lovely shade of pink, nice and bright and goes really well with lots of flower arrangements, especially if people want their pastel pink bouquets and jam jar posies. Red Ball is another cornflower that you can get and that's a really nice shade if you like your red flowers. Again, this would go well with autumn jars and bouquets because of the oranges and yellows and reds that you get at that time of year. If you like your reds and you fancy growing a mix, then try Classic Romantic, which is lots of red shades within the same seed packet and it's really pretty. You can also get Mauve Ball, which is a purple variety of cornflower and it's a super one to grow in the garden. I love this colour. And you can also get a good mix called Classic Magic, which is lots of mauve shades. So lots of paler lilacs and stronger purples and things in that mix if you want to try a whole lot of purple ones together. This is a really unusual one, it's called Black Ball Cornflower and it's stunning, it goes especially well in the autumn time with all those autumn shades of oranges and reds and yellows. And then we've got our white cornflowers, White Ball, I wouldn't be without these, I use them so much in wedding work, they're fantastic flowers. And mixed in together, cornflowers just look amazing in your garden, in your flower patches. It just brings the whole thing alive and they just have that wonderful wild flower meadow feel to them. And that is something really special to have in your garden. So do you need to pinch out cornflowers? Well, yes, you can pinch out cornflowers because they are um, a branching habit with lots of flower stems on them. Yes, you can pinch them and this will encourage more flowers to come. It'll encourage branching from lower down on the plant. So you can do this when they are about six inches tall and you just basically pinch off the topmost part of the stem just above some leaf nodes and that will encourage it to create new stems and branches and you should get more flowers from the plant then. Do you have to deadhead your cornflower as well? Yes you do. If you're cutting from them all the time you're kind of naturally doing this anyway but if you're enjoying them in the garden and you want to keep the display going longer then you definitely need to deadhead them. And you could just snip the flower heads off quite high on the plant but then the ones that are going to come later are just going to be very short stemmed. So if you want to have nice long stems that are usable again with flowers in future weeks you need to be cutting deep into the plant. So moving on now to harvesting and conditioning of cornflowers, what do you need to do there? Well, I always try and harvest my cornflowers either in the morning, early or in the evening. So not in the period of the day where the sun is at its warmest. This isn't so much of a problem here in Scotland for me. and um, We don't tend to have that many days where it's really baking hot. Um, so you probably could get away with cutting in the middle of the day as well, especially if it was a dull day um, where there wasn't much heat. But as a general rule, early in the morning or in the evening when the sun has gone down. When I harvest cornflowers I take a cleaned bucket of fresh water with me down to the flower patch and I cut the cornflowers straight into that so they're never out of water. I then take them up to our old stone garage where they will condition for a good several hours ideally overnight before they're then used the next day. When I'm harvesting the cornflowers and putting them into the buckets of water I always strip the lower leaves from the stem. Cornflowers don't need any kind of special conditioning as long as you've got a clean bucket with fresh water in it then that does fine. You don't need to be searing the stems or doing anything special with them. When you harvest cornflowers you do need to cut them when the flowers are open because if you cut them when they're closed they won't then fully open for you in the vase. So make sure that they have opened up before harvest. So here's a little bit of video to show you how I use my cornflowers. So I can use them, just cut straight from the garden into my clean buckets to go off to florists who will then use them in their arrangements and wedding work. 
I also love using corn flowers in bouquets. Now corn flowers aren't focal flowers, they're not going to be the main flowers in your bouquets. They're going to be the filler flowers, the supporting flowers, but they just add such amazing little bursts of colour. And in my bouquets I like to use a lot of varieties of flowers, so I'm not really making bouquets where it's just maybe five different varieties of flower that I use in it. I use so many different ones that I think are looking their best at that time in the garden on that day, and it makes every bouquet that I make very, very different. So I might use some blue cornflowers for just some little blue accents, like you can see here, or I might use some purple and pink ones. Because there's so many different coloured cornflowers that you can grow today, then it means that you can really mix and match them into whatever colour scheme you're using in a bouquet. And you can grow those pinks and whites for pastels, you can use the blues for pops of colour, you can use the reds, you can use the black ball for your autumn ones. So there's a lot of different versatile ways of using cornflowers. You do have to be a little bit careful when you're using cornflowers in your bouquets and arrangements because they do have very thin wiry stems and um, they're not very thick solid ones which means that they could break fairly easily so you just have to be that little bit careful when you're incorporating them into your flower work. Cornflowers are really good for lasting for a long time in a vase or a bouquet and you'll get a good week out of them, possibly even more. I've had some customers that have come back to me and said that their cornflowers are still going a couple of weeks later when all the other flowers have faded and then they've kept them because then they dry really nicely. So they are a really good long lasting cut flower. Cornflowers make their way into a lot of my jam jar posies and I think maybe it's because cornflowers is where we all started. I started growing cornflowers as one of my very first cut flowers and I also started making jam jar posies as the first thing I ever did with cloudberry flowers. So the two go together and they um, have carried on every year that I've done it. And I think adding cornflowers to jam jar posies is really good because they match them with so many other different flowers that I can use. You can use the different colours and again match them up to whatever colour scheme you're wanting to do and also they become a little bit more focal in a jam jar posy. Jam jar posies are smaller and therefore the smaller cornflower heads show themselves off to maybe better effect than in a bouquet where they're maybe just acting more as that supporting flower and getting a bit more lost in amongst um, the big focal flowers that you might have in there. So I think that they really show themselves off really well in a jam jar posy. So here's just a run through of some of my favourite jars that I've made up over the last several months and see if you can spot the cornflowers in them. Sometimes they're a bit more subtle, sometimes that you can spot them really easily. So there's some blue ones there. The blue ones always really stand out, I think. You'll find cornflowers on my garden gate stall all season long. You'll find them mixed in with ranunculus and anemones in May. You'll find them then going in with all the summer flowers like feverfew and cosmos in the summer. And then later on into the autumn you'll start seeing them with the dahlias and the scabious and um, the rudbeckia and things. So cornflowers just keep on going through the whole season as long as you have succession so in them. Next question is, can you grow cornflowers to use in wedding work? And the answer to this is a resounding yes, you can. Cornflowers are absolutely fantastic to use in wedding work. They really hold up really well out of water, which is what is so fantastic about them. So you can use them in anything. You can use them in bridal bouquets, you can use them in buttonholes, hair flowers, you name it. And I'll show you as we go along what I've used cornflowers in. So in the bouquets that you can see here, they're again, they're not the focal flowers, but they're just adding little accents here and there. I think they look so pretty in bridal and bridesmaid flower girl bouquets. And you can see here, this is an example of the classic magic mauve shades mix that you can get for your corn flowers. And they just are a little bit different than those colors that are just one full shade. So I might just have maybe five, seven cornflowers in a bouquet, just enough for little accents of colour in different parts of the bouquet. So can you spot the cornflowers here? We've got some nice purple ones at the bottom there. And here we've got some more purple just tucked at the bottom too. In these flower girl posies you can see the bright pink ones and the red ball at the back. 
In this bridal bouquet, it's got nice pops of blue cornflowers in it. It's also got some purple cornflowers that you might just be able to spot on the left and right hand sides as well. This bridal bouquet here has got some nice blue cornflowers and also some white ones if you can spot them. And this bridal bouquet has some nice purple cornflowers that match with the purple scabious. If you want a country garden style wedding, there's nothing better than having a jar full of cornflowers on your table mixed in with whatever else is blooming fantastically that week in the flower garden. Without a doubt, cornflowers will hold up really well for you for the whole of the wedding day out of water. They're fantastic for using in buttonholes. And you'll see from all the pictures here that they feature rather a lot in my buttonholes for weddings. It's because they're so reliable. There's nothing worse than trying to use a flower in somebody's buttonhole for their wedding and not knowing whether it's going to be reliable or not. Is it going to droop after a couple of hours in the sun? Or as I know, the cornflowers, they add that burst of colour, they match in really well with other flowers, and I know they won't droop either. And you can wire the cornflowers so that you can manipulate them a little bit and move them to where you want them to be in the buttonhole or to just sit them forward a little bit. Again, I use different colours depending on what the theme is for the wedding. Quite often, if it's a Scottish wedding, the men might be in kilts, and in that case, you are matching the colour of the buttonhole to the tartan. If you want a little bit more information on how I make my buttonholes, I do have a video on my channel about making them. So have a look at that um, to see how I do it and some of the other ingredients that I do use alongside my cornflowers for these. So because I know they hold up really well in the buttonholes, I also use them a lot when I'm making ladies' corsages as well for weddings. And again, because they've got the pinks and the purples as well as the blues and things, you can use them if you're making something um, that's got maybe some pink roses in it or you've got um, something that you want a bit more pastel to match an outfit. So this little corsage here, I have mixed some white gypsophila, oryngium, white heather with the cornflower. So we've got a white cornflower there and a blue cornflower too. The white cornflowers here work really well with the peachy roses and the white sweet william. And we've got some hare's tail grass and heather in there as well. We talk about cornflowers being filler flowers in bouquet, they're supporting flowers, they're not the focal ones that you look at, but I think in corsages and buttonholes, I think the cornflowers are the stars of the show. I think that they can be the focal flowers there. Here they're really popping out, you can see the pink cornflowers there and the purple cornflowers. They look fantastic. Over the last few years I noticed that um, people were asking more and more for wrist corsages as well rather than the pinned corsages and um, these have been brilliant with cornflowers because again you can um, use any colour, they sit really nicely, they hold up well. I also have used them in hair combs, fantastic for using with these alongside some status and some heather. They can be attached to hair combs by making little posies which then get wired in amongst the teeth on the hair comb but if you need to put in a particular flower in the centre you can always use a hot glue gun just to put a little bit of glue on the back of the cornflower and then to glue it into place on the comb. Cornflowers can also be individually wired and taped so that you can use them as hair flowers which are really pretty and you can also use them in flower crowns so you might spot the purple and white and pink ones there and some blue ones in this one. What else can you use cornflowers for? Well, we know that they dry really well, so this makes them a fantastic ingredient in my biodegradable confetti for weddings and events. And because you have all the different colours as well, you're not restricted to just the blue, which does make confetti really pop. It looks great, but you can also use all the whites and pinks and purples as well. And the whole collection of those dried together in with some calendula and larkspur and rose petals um, looks really fantastic. Cornflowers as well as drying really well also press really well and I've used them over the years to make pressed flower cards and they last really well in these as long as you keep them out of direct sunlight then they shouldn't fade and they should last an incredibly long time. They look really pretty in with other dried flowers in the cards. 
So there's so many great reasons to grow cornflowers, either just to enjoy in your garden and encourage wildlife, or just to cut a little bit and bring some into the house and have in a vase or make up your own jam jar posy to give to a friend, or if you're a flower farmer, to provide fantastic flowers for florists and to use in wedding work and to make into your own confetti. So lots and lots of good reasons to grow them. So thanks very much for watching today's video about cornflowers. I hope it's given you a little bit more detailed information about this particular cut flower and answered any questions that you might have had about growing it. But like I said before, if I've missed anything out, please just do leave me a comment in the comment section and I'll answer any questions that you have. They really are versatile, fantastic flowers, and you can have a whole season long flowering period if you succession sow. So I hope you're gonna get out there this weekend and try sowing some cornflowers and maybe just keep repeating batches of them every few weeks um, until about end of April time. And that should see you through and give you lots of lovely flowers right through from June till September, October time. If you enjoyed today's video, please do like and subscribe to my channel and that'll just let you know when new videos are coming out. And this year I do hope that I'll be able to do a whole series of videos looking at individual flowers that I enjoy growing. So some ideas I have at the moment are doing some more in-depth videos on corn cockles, Aurelia, Dorcas, snapdragons, sunflowers, lots of different ideas running through my head at the moment. So hopefully as the year goes on and I can do some more filming, we'll have a look at growing these from seed right through to harvesting as well. So that's quite exciting. So thanks very much for watching and join me next time when we will be having a look at one of the other flowers and also there'll be some more videos coming out of me back outside in the flower patch and looking at all these overwinter seedlings as well.